So in this one, we'll be visualizing daylight factor results. And what we are going to do is we are going to use like some of these guys as our guide here. Okay. So because we already done this, right? So I can copy this all and paste it here. I'll be using the same mesh. The value is going to be the changing one. So the results are the results. If I preview this on and if I maybe change this to something else, I don't know. This is fine. Okay. And it's not going to daylight autonomy. It's like this time daylight factor. So <clears throat> what I'll be doing here is to basically, let's preview this, let's group this, and let's add this to this group too. And like, let's create the layer first, and you have option three. Okay, and we can move this layer up. Let's pick everything, but let's add some more color. 100% it's almost impossible, so let's have it, like, I don't know, 20 or maybe 10 or 15. I don't know, it's, again, completely up to you. But then I have to change my uh, layer name because I've put some information. So 0 to 15%. Okay, so that when I come back, I always remember. So, the, but this is good, but this is something that we want to visualize alongside with something else. So, what, as I said at the previous video, the average is quite important because some countries are pulling this as a regulation. So, some portions uh, of, I don't know, like northern countries requiring 0. Point, sorry, 2.5 as an average uh, daylight factor to make sure that the space that is being designed receives enough daylight. And we have, we can do it both ways with native grasshopper components, or we can use something called ladybug mesh threshold selector, which is way better. So one thing that I wanted to do here is I want to put the meshes to meshes and pull out a number because this number is going to be having a, our daylight results, daylight factor results, putting this in and the operator you see, there are things that we already have here as a, as a default values. So one thing that we see here is the operator. So what we want to see if, let's say, our threshold value is, if I grab a scribble and then put threshold, and then let's say 0 0.5 is my threshold. So this is good to have these kind of colors here but let's group this so operator is gonna be now greater than so if i put this in here to my uh, threshold value here as you see it's going to be showing me the larger parts in which the threshold is 22 point more than 2.5 right and if i call put the operator smaller Then it will do the same thing, but now the meshes are this. So it's showing me the meshes that are below 2.5%. Okay. And what, how we can see this? We can see this by basically pulling this result onto... Um, I copy this and paste it. We can pull this result in. And the text is going to be the results. So if I preview this on... Super small, but it still takes a lot of. You see, we are receiving, we are having the parts that are smaller than 2.5. And this is another way that you can create these kind of visualizations, right? Like the total area, total value, sub mesh, and outline. So, two polyline curves, sub mesh. If you connect the mesh component here, you can receive this. Maybe you can preview this off just to see. So the locations that we are seeing here, the parts that we are seeing that are receiving under our threshold 2.5. So if you put tre or threshold 5, you see that it goes up. If you put threshold 10, you see this is how you can deal with this analysis. And this being said, we are 
coming to an end for our playlist here and we can take this name into uh, daylight factor okay and add this to this group and i think we can recolor this group to something greener and that is that is pretty much it so uh that's pretty much it for this playlist i hope you enjoyed it uh, we covered all the daylight basics within Honeybee, so stay tuned for the next playlists.